Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, I want to thank um, uh, once again everyone that is here. I, I think just to be able to know where we're all signing in from, if you don't mind in the chat box, you could just tell us where you are calling in from this evening. So just a quick one in the chat box, let's know where you are. I know there are a couple of people who are going to join us, but we're going to start right away. So in the chat box, could you just put where you are? All right, uh, Pastor Deji, yes, you are in Lagos, hey, Antibumi is in Baltimore. <laughs> yes, Pastor Shegu, Nottingham. How are you, sir? I know there's someone else from, yeah, by your day from South Africa. Yeah, Antibumi from Johannesburg. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Just keep keep typing so we know we know there are a whole lot of ah bio <laughs> from Houston, Pastor Share from Lagos. Thank you all so very much uh, for for being uh, for being here tonight. Um, what I'm going to do is to do a quick um, introduction of uh, Pastor Tola. Now you know Jesus Christ when he was here. He asked his disciples one time, who do men say I am? Um, and I look at that like a bio. And then he now said, who do you say <laughs> I am? So let me, in a way, talk about who do men say Pastor Tola is. So I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading his biography. Pastor Tola FCA is a senior pastor of Jesus House Baltimore. He was a chartered accountant at Pitmawi, KPMG, and at DHL, he was you know, treasury controller and business development manager before being called into full-time ministry. Uh, pastor was the provincial pastor for North America Region 1, uh, that's in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and covering areas like Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, Rhode Island, and, Virg and Virginia. Pastor is the chairman of the Alpha Leadership Conference, an organization charged with promoting and teaching leadership skills to all people of all nations. He consults, mentors, and coaches Pastors speaks regularly at leadership conferences, churches, corporations, ministers conferences, seminars, and other leadership development opportunities. He was the author of "I'm Better Than This" and one other book that I've read, "Line Crossers." He has a passion to challenge people to pursue and maximize their God-given potential. Now that's um, a great bio, but let me now talk about the pastor that I know. I think the first time I met Pastor was, I don't know, must have been maybe like 99 or 2000. He had come to my uh, church to preach. My pastor then was uh, Pastor Femi Obawea. And um, shortly afterwards, you know, I spoke to Pastor and um, he had wanted me to come and help out with the choir um, in Baltimore. I honestly don't remember whether it was 2000, 2001 or 2002. It was one of those years. So obviously more than 20 years ago. And, you know, one of the things that I, that I know about Pastor is, you know, he's just a straightforward person. Um, you know, he doesn't beat around the bush. That's, that's what I know about Pastor you know, and, um, and of course, you know, visionary. I look at what the church in Baltimore was, what it was like then. And then I was there like uh, two or three weeks ago and I was like, wow, you know, God has done God has done amazing things. So once again, Pastor you're welcome. Thank you Thanks. for this was very short notice. And I know you I know you just indulged me like this uh, boy. Well <laughs> thank you for indulging me. So my first question to you tonight uh, is um you recently became a grandfather, and I I wanted to ask, you know, how is that how is life as a grandfather? I mean, because when I when I was in church that day, you know, you were just dilting over your Oh, well, grand, grandson, I think. Grandson, yeah. Right. What, what's his name again? His name is Levi Adetola Odetola. Yeah. Wow, wow. So how does that make you feel, sir? You and Pastor Kofo? Yeah, I'm proud and privileged mm. uh, because I know that um, it's a desire of many. Mm. And, um, and not everybody gets to, you know, experience it due to one thing or the other. Um, like a friend of mine said once that if he knew that grandchildren were this fun, he would have had them first before having his own children. I guess it's the same thing with me. <laughs> <You know>? so, <laughs> wow, that, that that is interesting. So let me uh let's let's talk about church a bit, you know. So Jesus House Baltimore, 
uh, I think celebrated 25 years in uh, September last year, if uh, if uh, if I'm correct. True. You mm-hmm. know, um, I- I'm sure you have one or two interesting stories. You know, I actually remember one, but I'm not going to. That I think that you shared once. Uh, I think when I was, you know, serving with you then, you know, um, I don't know if you could just share one or two interesting stories about what it was like in the beginning. You know, because uh, I'm sure there are one or two pastors who are here who are starting a, a new work, and you know, the tendency is to think that ah, man, this problem, you know, nobody has faced this kind of problem in my life. But the truth of the matter is that we all know that that is. <laughs> That is Bobo. <laughs> I'd like to just, you know, for you to just share one or two experiences with us tonight, if, if you will, sir. Okay. Thank you, Pastor mm-hmm. Wally. And uh, it's a good idea, this this thing that you have put together, honestly. Mm-hmm. I, I just love it because um, it makes our work real mm-hmm. and uh, it allows for more fellowship mm-hmm. amongst pastors. And uh, the good thing about it also is that when you hear what some people are going through, it, it makes you feel a little more better, you know, uh, with yourself because yeah. you realize that um, you are not the only one. Yes. Um, our, our start was very interesting, you know, uh, because number one, I've always said that I didn't know that uh, I had a call. I didn't even know that they were calling me or anybody was <laughs> calling anybody. You understand? And um, all I just wanted to do was just serve God, you know, with all my heart. Uh, but... As time went, I began to realize that, okay, um, this is what God is asking us to do. Uh, the beginning was very was very tough. Uh, very tough because, um, number one, there was, there was really no help, you know, from the system, you know, at that time that we were in. Uh, concerning this, all we had was that uh, you have been asked to go and, uh, and then... You, you sell your house, you sell your life, you sell everything, you know, just to set it up. And uh, ours was not different, do you understand? Um, uh, the, the next thing that I, you know, that, 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 that I saw there was that um, my pastor came one day and, and said to me, Tola, what message are you preaching to the people? You know, it was very interesting because here was I, uh, the places I served was not a pulpit ministry when I was mm-hmm. in. In Nigeria, you yeah. know, I, I I started as an usher. From there, I, I moved on to to holy police. Then from holy police, I moved on to you know maintenance. Do you understand? So so he wasn't really there. I wasn't a pulpit person, you know. But uh, I guess one way or the other, I laughed because because I knew what he was trying to say is like you know we never saw you uh, as this. And uh, at the onset of the church. Um, what was said was that let's see what this church will be like in three months. Let's try it. If it doesn't work in three months, then let's uh, let's uh, close it up. You know, and all that. Um, we are still here. Twenty six <laughs> years. We are still here. God has been faithful to us. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, now, one of the things that I, I mean, that I, that I know you for, like I said, um, I know that if there's one thing you set your your mind to, you know, it's done. I, I don't know, the, you know, when I was with you guys uh, like 20 years ago, there used to be this property, um, I don't know, I don't know whether I heard right, but it was owned by some very, uh, some woman, I don't know whether I said she was a witch or something, she was, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, I know, you know the story, it's your story. <laughs> I remember, I remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they were our next door neighbor. Yes. And, uh, and they used to have like, you know, overnight meetings, hmm. you know, where they'll be chanting and uh, hmm. a lot of all things were going on there, hmm. you know. I, and I knew this was just not, it was too close for comfort for me, hmm. you know. And uh, one day, interestingly, I came to church and, and I said to the people, uh, can you just turn back and stretch forth your hands to that building? Hmm. You know, that uh, we are going to buy that building. Hmm. Uh, hmm. And then we prayed, and, and that was it. Hmm. Uh, some months down the line, the owner of the building just walked up to the church. I was not here then. I hmm. think I had gone to minister somewhere. And the owner said, really, we, they, we want to move out, and uh, we'd like to sell hmm. this place. When I came back and they told me, I said, hey, praise God, how much do you want to sell <laughs> They told us this thing. We just bought it off. Wow. Uh, wow. And uh, 
wow. the place is where we have the school now. The school, yes, I noticed that. Where we had, you know, I noticed the school that. Now, you mm. know, but mm. it, it just shows, you know, the handiwork work of God concerning mm. this. You mm. know, I have no doubt that um, God's hand is, you know, heavy mm. upon this ministry mm. uh, because there are many testimonies I can tell you, mm. you know, of, of what God has been doing. Mm. up to this present moment that uh, i'm telling you you mm. you even if you are not a believer you will know that definitely there is a force somewhere mm. that mm. is directing you know these people let me give you a, a quick one on this please do please do sir mm. there's a land that is opposite us uh it's about 90 something acres of land you know uh yeah yeah about 90 acres of land there about uh, we used to park there you know park, you know when we have overflow mm. and uh and one day, the, the owner of the land, you know, uh, we said to him, would you be interested in selling? And he said, yes. And he gave us a figure. And uh, we agreed with the figure. And we signed a contract, you know. Um, some months later, I had a feeling in my spirit that the amount we agreed was just too much. Mm -hmm. That we could have gone for something lower, mm -hmm. you know. So, so we had a workers' retreat. So I told the trustees, I said, uh, I think we bought that thing, you know, for too much, you know, price. And uh, we should go and, you know, negotiate. They negotiate. said, but Pastor, we've already signed the contract. That there's nothing that I say, it's okay, but let's just go there and renegotiate. Mm -hmm. Ask the man, can we renegotiate? He said, how much? So I told them a figure, you know. So they called the guy. The man said, we should bring the new figure that he will agree. <laughs> we now said further, we said, guess what? We don't even have the money. Mm -hmm. And you finance it for us, which means mm. you are the one selling, you are the one also financing. Mm. The man said, no problem, they will finance. So I was very curious mm. because this is an old man. So, so I called him later and I said to him, why did you agree to all our demands? Mm. And the man told me, this is where you see the hand of God. Mm. He said, his parents bought that land over a hundred years ago. Wow. And when the parents died, they put in the will that if you must sell you must sell to a church. Wow. 100 wow. years ago. Wow. God has made the provision. Wow. 100 years ago. How wow. come we bought land opposite that same land mm. that has been seeded as it were mm. Mm. church? To a church. And, that, wow. and I look at 100 years ago, where was I in Africa? <laughs> what my parents doing 100 years ago? Do you understand? <laughs> so it just shows you that mm. there is just, mm. you know, mm. there's a God somewhere. Yes. That is moving all this thing mm. Mm. That, that that i mean that that is and, and even that um that audaciousness to even go further to try and renegotiate because sometimes you could have just you know just sealed it off at that first price you know uh I, I, and i think doing that actually now because if you hadn't done that you would never have known that that land was wheeled uh no, with those kind I of conditions not, i will not have known yes yes I mean, that, that's amazing mm. Okay, I mean, I, I think you know one of two things that I that I see you um, they are very big on is you know vision and and and, and leadership, you know, and you know I, I I like you to just you know speak to 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 leaders here, and this is why I'm saying that is I mean the other day I was in I was in uh, Baltimore like three weeks ago, and one of you know my young friends uh, Carl Day had said oh you had organized this meeting. And I was asking, okay, so uh, did you guys pay? He said, no, that you did it for them free of charge. And I said, I mean, uh, I mean, that's something that, of course, you, you do do you, you do some events that are that are paid for. Um, but one of the things that that I find remarkable about you is how sometimes you go out of your way, you know, to help people. I remember, for instance, when my when my mother-in-law died in the U.S., you know, and I didn't want to disturb anybody, and you almost yapped you and said, how come, how come I didn't call you? I mean. This and that. I, I want you to speak about to, to leaders how to be deliberate uh, in terms of executing uh, a vision. You know how to be deliberate because obviously all the things that you've done at JAB with the Windsor Christian Academy uh, with, with the young people, there's an element of deliberateness about it. I, I'd like you to just speak to that. I, 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 I the, the truth, honestly, is that. Um, I think part of all this uh, came out of my background. Mm. You understand? Um, 
when we read the story about David's father, Jesse, how Samuel went to anoint one of the children as king, he never really gave a thought as it were, you know, about David until when God had rejected all the others. Mm. And then he said, do you have any more children? He said, oh, there's one in the, you know. <laughs> uh, that's more like the story of my life, really. Do you understand? Uh, my dad never really gave too much thought to me as a person that I was going to become anything in life. And, 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 and for me, those were the driving forces. You know, if there's anything that drives me, it is for one or two people to, to underrate what could be done. Mm. And what they don't know is that they have just given me serious injection to move mm. forward mm. and just fight like mm. a tiger. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? And yeah. get the thing yeah. done. You know, yeah. and, and, and what has helped us is it also is focus. I, I, don't, I don't fight too many battles at the same time. It's the same thing in my marriage. I choose my fights. Do you understand? <laughs> and, and once you choose what you want to do and the focus, uh, it's, 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 in, it's going to be almost impossible. Let mm. me say this. You know, for, and with God being with you, mm. for you not to achieve uh, yeah. uh, you know, your, your goal. Um, I was in RCCG for about 30 years. You know, no matter what anybody wants to say, I'll, I'll tell you this. One thing you cannot take away from the general vassal of RCCG, Pastor Deboe, is that he has focus. Mm. You know, he, he has focus. He totally knows where he's going and mm. what he wants. He has focus. Mm. You know, and he talks about it all the time. And each time he talked about it, I always take instruction from that. And I'm saying, man, at this age, this man has this much focus. Mm. Then what's wrong with me? Mm. What's wrong with me? You know, the, uh, Part of the challenge in church is that there are many pastors who are doing too many things at the mm. same time. Mm. I always say to pastors, why are you raising, you know, funds, like four or five funds at the mm. same time? You mm. know, you are raising, uh, uh, just not just offering, you are raising building fund, you mm. know, you are doing that. Then you are raising a welfare fund, you are raising the... People will always choose the one that is convenient for them. So yeah. I said, let's just have focus. Just if it's building you want to face, face the building. Mm. And make sure the money you get, you used it for the building and yes. let the people see, see. Yeah. what mm. you have used it for. Mm. That is what allows people to have more trust in you. Mm. So that the next time you come back, they say, mm. you know what? The last funds that this guy took, he used it for what he wanted to use it for. Mm. You know, mm. and, and honestly, every pastor needs focus because mm. there will be many what i call market noise around you do you understand market yes. noise you know uh, colloquially we call it a reward do mm. you understand you know, so you, you 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 have to when you go to the market no matter the noise in the market you understand you know the store you are going to you just face that store <laughs> you know and, and yeah. i'm talking about market in 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 my early days now mm. not not uh, malls and all that i'm talking market market so my mom will say it is where i sent you that you should go <laughs> it is where i said so in those days when you get yeah. to the market there are many ways that enters the market there is a particular way you get there you will see rondo rondo if any, some people here you know they will know what i'm talking about you know <laughs> they, they are doing cards and they are doing things and i say oh this one you 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 want <coughs> excuse me so much money mm. because i had the money for food items that I want to buy in the market, in my pocket. I dare not go there. I'll mm. just face where I'm going. Mm. I'll just face it. And that over time has helped me, mm. you know, so that now it, it's not so much of a struggle for me to mm. focus, unless mm. I've not heard from God mm. concerning the matter. But if I've right. heard from God concerning the matter, I'm telling you, I, 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 I face it all heartedly. Mm. Amazing. Okay, <laughs> uh, bless you, sir. Uh, so let me let me ask this question. And this this happened last year. You know, you you called me, and uh, you wanted to. You know, you were asking me, okay, uh, how was I doing all this uh, online stuff? And, and first of all, I mean, I was I was shocked that I mean, how can Pastor even be calling me about this? You know, and but obviously, you know, over time, especially with COVID, and I think I've had 
you know, uh, even though I may not have, have had the discussions with you, but sometimes I talk with Pastor Femi and he talks about the discussions that you've had. Uh, you know, there's always that need for us to relearn and, and unlearn, you know. I, I want to ask you, you know, how how that, you know, has, has been for you, you know, because, you know, you grew up in, you know, Freedom Hall days, you know, there's some things that we learned. How, how have you had to maybe throw some, some things overboard and, you know, without necessarily discounting on, on the truth? Uh, I don't know whether my, my question is... Uh, is... I, 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 I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get it. Yeah. You know, you know the, the, the greatest attribute of any leader is the attribute to be able to learn mm. and continuously learn. Mm. Do you understand? When you think you know everything, um, it's it's dangerous. Mm. Do you understand? And for me, uh, I've always opened up my my mind about learning and relearning things. Now, let's take it from uh, you talked about Freedom Hall. There were things that were done in Freedom Hall. Very good. Very nice. Very motivating, challenging. Do you understand? But there were some other things and some other ways that things were done that you can't do it now. For instance, those days when we call for a meeting, everybody is, you are speeding on the, uh, that Ikorodu <laughs> road. Ikorodu road. You to get to church, pra, 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 pra. then you get there late. They say, oh, you must stand at the back. Or you, If you do that today as a pastor, you are the one that will do everything yourself. <laughs> you, 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 you are the only one that will do everything yourself. Let's look at our children, the way <laughs> our, our parents brought us up. Mm. You know, every little thing, you are beating for it. Every little thing. You do that, especially for me, I'm living in America. I will come and visit you in jail. <laughs> you understand? You know, apart from the fact that serious mental health issues hmm. you have to deal with. Yeah. You understand? So, so you don't have a choice but to look for other ways of getting things. You know, before, in our days as workers, everything was by rules and regulation. You know, authority and submission. Authority and submission. Mm. Wait, mm. do they have regard for authority today? You're talking about authority and submission. When half of your members are attending four churches every Sunday, four, four mm. every Sunday. So mm. you get the microphone and you are the preacher, and then you want to preach until like, Jesus comes. You don't have to preach everything today. Ah, maybe you are, you are the one. You are, you are there next week. You, if you are, if you came with ten points and you can only do four points, do the four points and say we'll continue next week. Mm. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We'll come to mm -hmm. next week. Make it a series. Yeah. Do you understand? You know, so 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 you have to continuously change and learn <laughs> and say, how can yeah. we get this thing better? Mm -hmm. Honestly, for me, Pastor Wale, all I look out for, and all our pastors and ministers know this and our church, is there a better way of doing this thing? Mm -hmm. A simpler way of doing these things. Yeah. Now, this is where. Some people will have challenges, especially when you are a religious person. You say, oh, this is the way they used to do it. This is the way. In fact, if you come to our church and you tell me this is the way they used to do it. In those days, when we were in the, you know, um, in our city, if you tell me this is the way to you do it, honestly, you are going. It's not <laughs> going to happen. You, are, you, you will not even move near anything. This is the way to do it. No, 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 no. Because I know once people say that, you are one of those that will celebrate status quo. Mm. And I don't believe in status quo. You know, I believe that we should challenge ourselves, you know, to be the best that God has created us, you know, mm. to be. So, mm. honestly, I'm open to mm. learning every time. Mm. So, when I called you, it was because, not because we were not doing well as it were, or we were not doing what we were supposed to do. But then I called you, I said, okay, you know what? This guy is doing something nice. Let me let's hear from him how he's doing. Mm. It. Da, 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 da. This mm. is the result of it. Mm. We did that same program. It was a leadership program. Last year, September. Friday and Saturday. On those two days, we had over 5,000 people wow. part of the meeting. Wow. So mm. why will I not want to learn more? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And the year prior to that, maybe we did a uh, 1,000 plus. Mm. You understand? Mm. So there's always room for improvement. Yes. There's always room for improvement. Just yeah. let the message be the same. But how we bring about the message to the people, you know, is, is changing every day. 
mm. you know. Remember, we used to carry those Dick's Bible. And, oh, yes. Uh, those, those, <laughs> how many people are carrying those Bibles Both again? Yeah. You understand, you know. Yeah. So, so everything is on, uh, on, your, on your phone now and everything, you know. So, yeah. so there can be improvement. There can be mm. improvement. Mm. All right. Uh, if so, if if you have any questions, please, I'd like you to just put it in the chat box. Uh, we 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 look at it um, as we go on in this uh, uh, discourse with uh, Pastor Tola. Now, you know, you you raised something about um, authority, <laughs> you know, authority and submission. You know, I, I remember there was a there was a, you know my present church. My pastor wanted me to talk about it, and I just said, man, sorry. I, I, I can't even go back in that in that direction because you know it's it's just a it's just a different it's just a different guy because you have children, people still today are asking questions. And you know, we grew up in a generation where I mean, where would you even have the audacity, right? To even ask, mm -hmm. to even ask a question. You know, even if you conceive it, you better just end in that realm of conception. <laughs> you know. So, but I want to ask you because. You know how how do you work with you know with young people you know volunteers as opposed to the way because I think this is one of the challenges that you know pastors have. I mean you've mentioned one you know in terms of you know people coming to workers meeting and they are late. You know I even had things of people who come late to online workers meeting and they said they should lock them out and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> you know, just give us some some experiences in terms of working you know with with, with younger people you know these days. Yeah, uh, it, it's it, it's challenging. It's it's very challenging, you know. But you mm -hmm. see, part of what has helped me is that I have young adult children, mm -hmm. and I talk to them a lot. Do mm -hmm. you understand? And um, I know how they think mm -hmm. and how they approach things. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So. They are not different from the ones that come to church because mm. they can also come to the same church, you know. You understand, you know. So if I can learn all those things from them, uh, I should be able to to be able to deal with the ones in church. Mm. I said this thing one day in church, and everybody laughed. I said, in our family, we have two boys, you know, and two girls, you know, two girls. Uh, my niece is one of the two girls, hmm. and my wife. I said, I'm <laughs> the only one that does not use the earring, <laughs> <laughs> including the men yeah. and the women. Hmm. I'm the only one that does not use the earring. And, and you see, I, and I'm saying to myself, you know what? I might not use the earrings. I will not use the earrings, hmm. but I must see life and their work with God beyond the earrings. Hmm. I have to. Mm. I have to. Or else I'm going to shut them down. Mm. And at the end of the day, what will be my story? Mm. That because my son was plating his hair mm. and because of that, we shut him out of the ministry or we mm. shut him out of church. Mm. Our church, there was a time we did um, a, a survey. And that survey 80% of our members were under 50. Hmm. Today, 90% of our members are under 54. 90%. Hmm. Which hmm. means people in my age, we are endangered species <laughs> in our church. <laughs> Absolutely. If, if you don't have an open heart, you know, it will be difficult for you in my age and upwards to come to our church and feel comfortable. Mm. You understand? Because yeah. you look at it and say, oh, they, they, they. but guess what? I don't see what the people are seeing now in those young adults. I see their potentials. Mm. And it is that potential that I'm addressing. Mm. Every one of us, everybody on this online meeting, I want you also to know that when you did not believe in yourself, mm. God yeah. called you. Mm. Somebody saw your potential. Why mm. should we? I remind my wife every day. And I say to her, I said, those kids are no longer kids. Though. Mm. I know it is a problem for mothers. Mothers will always see their children, no matter the age, as yeah. a young children. I said, in their age, at least two of them, or three of them, in their age, you have had two children. No? <laughs> 
I said, so don't don't just address mm -hmm. them like uh, mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -hmm. so, you know. So so over time, people get to understand that thing and mm -hmm. say, you know what? Now and people have asked me some questions. I say, oh, uh, how do you deal with them? You know, mm -hmm. when they do wrong, you know, discipline and all that. You know, it's my job to model to them how to behave, mm -hmm. how to behave. They will get it wrong. Mm. That we too got it wrong when we started this thing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I have friends who are pastors today that when we became Christians, they were still drinking. They were still doing things. Mm. Do you understand? But over time, over time, over time, like Jesus said concerning Lazarus, he said, lose him and let him go. The word of God began to lose us. Mm. You know, and that's what happens with every one mm. of us. Is mm. the word. It is the word that grows us. It is the word that matures us. Mm. When you do something wrong, I can call you and say, hey, come on, don't do that. You should know better. When we know better, we do better. And that, that's more than enough for some. Yeah. They will get it. Mm. And more so because of the respect they hold you in high esteem, yeah. they don't want to disappoint you. And I say to them, don't disappoint God. Me, I'm man. Mm. Let's look at it this way. Now put God over me and mm. don't disappoint God. Mm. and all that and then um, one way or the other we're able to to get there yeah okay so i have a i have a question here uh i think i think you go to related to what you've just said uh, Lou, what is asking how do you deal with young or youth leaving the church uh the complaint was that the church is not interesting to them uh, how do you deal with this without compromising the ancient landmark you know the truth about youth living in the church is that they will always leave, not just youth. People will always leave churches. I, I always say this, that the day God created the church, they threw the key away. <laughs> but just make sure. So the, the door is always open. Mm -hmm. It's called open door policy. Mm -hmm. Just make sure that the number of those living is lower than the number of those who are coming in. Mm. Which means as more people live, more people are coming in. Mm. Not, for the youth, for instance, when they say the church is not interesting, the church is not, is not... Have you forgotten that many of us, we left the Anglican church because it was not interesting? Mm. Our parents took us there, but we left. Mm. We left the Methodist church because it was not interesting. Our parents took us there, but we left. Some of the reasons why we left, they are doing it now. Have you seen praise and worship in Anglican church? Mm. Have you seen praise and worship in Catholic church now? Mm. They call it charismatic. Mm -hmm. They understand serious, intense praise and worship. And these were things that was never done before. Yeah. But over time, they began to see that we are losing our young ones. We are losing our young ones. What do we do? My suggestion is that number one, it starts from the top. It starts from the head. And since we are pastors, I believe mostly that we're here, we are pastors. Mm. Let the change begin with you. Mm. How does that start? Look at it this way. What kind of songs are you singing in that church? Mm. Because the kind of songs that this, our young adults are singing is different from the one that you are used to. Mm. So you have to, because I live in America and I've seen quite some people here you know, online, you know, who are participants here that live in America and abroad. You know, you, I say to people that if you want to make this a Nigerian church, you might as well go back to your What are you talking about here? No, 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 no. There are people from all walks of life that are here. So you have to be intentional about the songs that you sing. You have to be intentional about your message. First of all, you will not believe this. There used to be a time, to be a time, that the attention span of an average person was about 25 minutes. Mm. How did I get to 25 minutes? The television programs, mm. it's usually 30 minutes program. Correct. But because of um, adverts, uh, and, all of adverts and all that, so yes. it turns about 25 or 22 minutes there mm. about. Yeah. Sir, right now, the attention span is less than two minutes <laughs> with young adults. Mm. How, you, how do you know this? Just text them while they are in church. You will see them. They will, they will, they will, they will, they will text you back. 
<laughs> the sermon is going on. The church is going on. So, which means you mm -hmm. as a pastor, you have a challenge. And your challenge is that I must catch this person mm. for the first five minutes that I get the microphone. If I don't catch this person, I've lost them. Mm. And after a while, they're going to leave. Mm. They're going to leave. Mm. You understand? So, it's our job to be intentional about what we do. Uh, about 10 years ago, we started a youth church. In fact, I did not even, I can't even believe that it was 10 years on, mm. until they told me that they want to do 10th anniversary. You know, people from, because we realized that when people leave high school at age 18 here, once they go to college, mm. then that gap, we don't have anything for them. And mm. most times they have attended some fellowships on, on campus. And when they come in for holidays, it's very difficult for them to flow in the main service. Yeah. So we mm. set, set up something for them from that mm. age to 18 to age 30. Mm. And they do their own service. They do everything. They have their own hall now. They have their pastor. They have their praise and worship. They do everything on their own. You know, now we have now moved to another level, which is we now have a service for everybody, which is the last Sunday in our church of the month. So they mm. come in. So part of it, they will do the praise. And part of it, their pastor will preach also. And mm. I will sit down also and be taking mm. notes. Mm. Yes. And, and that, they, they have to know that they are part of this system. No, mm. And the days of telling them, I tell you this, why did you tell me to do this? Because I said so. Ah, those days are over. <laughs> those days are over. You can say so for a long time. After a while, young adults, they will just mm. take, you know, they will not vote with their feet. Mm. Mm. Okay, I mean, great, great answer there. I have questions that are probably now. I have this other question here. Uh, it says, sir, what's your take on home self fellowship and uh, church growth and its impact in this in this modern this modern era? I, I believe in home, home church fellowship, but not at the expense of the global church. Do you understand? Um, mm. When we look at the Acts of the Apostles. Church growth started from home fellowship. As a matter of fact, they had no choice but to do home fellowship. And this is one of the reasons. By the time you start a church, because when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they began to speak in other tongues. And from there, Peter rose up and began to speak. If 3,000 people give their lives, if 5,000 people give their lives, and then several other give their lives, which sanctuary, excuse me, will they put them? Mm. which sanctuary ask yourself as a pastor today you do a crusade and 3,000 people give which church address are you going to give them mm. if, the, if your church sits at <laughs> uh, 250 or 500 yeah. so which church address are you going to so this is so so at that time they had no choice but to start own fellowship in order not to lose those people mm. and the challenge is that when you have a big church like we do for God by God's grace, you must do. If the reason is that people don't feel connected to you like that easily, mm. but when you have cell groups, they feel connected to themselves, they see themselves as family. There are mm. things that they go through that they might not be able to call the pastor and book an appointment and all that, but because they know that they have a cell leader and the cell group, they can bring their prayer requests there and people can pray with them, people can follow them up, even without you, pastor, knowing that something has happened. Mm. So I believe that home cell group is important in these end times, you know, but not at the expense of the church. Mm. The church must always also be able to come together mm. as a church because therein there is corporate anointing. How mm. good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity mm -hmm. and yeah. know all that scripture. So, so, so it's important that we are able to do the two because you can chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> that's that's powerful. Uh, honestly, I'll also, if I may, if I may add, you know. Um, Again, we also even need to relearn and learn some maybe um, how we even organize these home fellowships. You know, I remember in, um, while I was pastoring, we had like uh, maybe six home fellowships for God knows how many years. You know, and I think part of it was that people just wearing keen, you know, go to other people's houses or some people come to the, come to the houses. And the revolution that happened for us was we initiated interest group um you know cell groups 
you know, so, okay, you like football. Okay, all of you come together. Oh, you like hairdressing. And I think in one day, I mean, my uh, as former assistant is here, who, who took over. I think in one day we started like 38 or 45 uh cell groups, you know, people who love cars, people who love sports, people who love news. And the deal was, I mean, there's a book on that. I mean, I've forgotten the title of the book. I'm sure my, my friend will type it in there. I think it's by Johnny Church somewhere in, in New York or something. And a lot of churches are actually following those templates. And what it is is that, you know, you discuss the Bible first and, and then you can now follow your interest afterwards. And it's not straight jacketed because it's run in semester basis, right? And uh, so if you run this semester and you want, if you love football and you want to go to car, you can go the next semester so that there's no, um, how do I put it? It's not straight jacketed. Let me, uh, I think you've answered someone's question here. You actually use those same words, you know, that this is not the, the era of telling them, you know, uh, but let me, it says in our quest to be open-minded and inclusive, um, at what point are there boundaries? Uh, do we think the younger generation are being effectively discipled? Uh, for, let's say for the kingdom. I, I don't know. I, does that, does that, is that clear, Pastor? I, I get it. You know, okay. yeah, let, me, let me say this. Part of the challenge, honestly, is that um, every generation believes their generation is the best. <laughs> Every generation. Mm. I've had some older people, who are much older than me, they say, Gone are the good old days. <laughs> Told you. The days when there were no telephones, good old days. Mm. Good old days. When it was rotary, and you have mm. to do it, and when you make a mistake, you start all over again. Mm. Now, today, you talk to your phone like this, your phone will call. Mm. So, which one are the good old days? Yeah, gone are the good old days. When our fathers were earning, some kind of money and all that. And the money, you know, so much value. But you look at these days now, our children are graduating. When my kids and some other kids tell me the kind of salary they are getting, I say, who's giving you this kind of money? I said, to do what? How much did they use? How much did they spend to marry my mother? <laughs> that they are paying you this kind of money? So what I'm trying to say, you know, is that when we started in the Pentecostal church, our parents never gave us a chance. Mm. They just thought that you guys, you're, all you are doing is there just to make noise and be jumping and mm. see mm. what the Lord has done. Mm. Sure. So it's the same thing. Let me use a good analogy. Uh, in my days when you want, you know, you want to study for an exam, we go into the bush or you go and drink coffee and you do this so that you can be able to stay away for a long time. And I, all I that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, no, <laughs> very interesting. You know, then you do the exam and da da da. Today you enter your young adult's room, and they say they are studying. You know, for an exam, and you're saying, ah, with the TV on, <laughs> with uh, busy uh, playing, busy uh, play. <laughs> with a uh, phone, something on your. Mm. How do you now know whether they really studied? Let's wait for the result now, and then mm. the result comes and I say, ah. Mm. I might not understand this thing, though, but I think it's working for you. Mm. So if it's working for you, do it. What I'm trying to say is that we have our work cut out for us. Yes, we want to disciple them. Do you understand? But discipleship is not by force. So we believed in those days that it was by force. Mm. We believe when we talk about discipline, you must... How about when we used to go and cut grass? Just mm. because we didn't come for a meeting. <laughs> and they call it discipleship. <laughs> I remember one day, we were going to beg that we didn't come uh, for one meeting. Mm. And we came from work. <laughs> Majority were wearing suit and tie. And it started raining. They said we should kneel down there. Mm. Uh, I said, even <laughs> at that time, I said, is this God? Mm. I said, God, can God do this to us like this? With this suit? I left that Reno. I said, no, 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 no. I remember how much I bought that suit for. I said, ah. I said this suit will not shrink on me because we are kneeling down. And we were told that we should wait for the general of mm. Even when the man came out, the man too did not like what they saw. He said, why would you keep them in the rain? Mm. It was the handiwork of man. We have to be mm. very careful about this thing that we call the savage. That 
Do you know the, form, the best form of discipleship that Jesus did for the disciples? He modeled it for them. Mm. Yeah. He modeled it for them. Let us model it for them. Not just to say, oh, the uh, Bible says this, Bible says this. You know, people can talk about prayer and yet you will never see them pray. He modeled it. Mm. So let's model it for them. Let's model it for them. Mm. Let's model it for them. And the more they see us do this thing, even if you think they are not doing it now, believe me, it's not in vain. It's not in vain. Mm. Eventually, I'm telling you, the mm. fruit will not fall too far from the tree. Eventually, mm. they will come around yeah. and they will still serve God. Because don't forget one thing. God is the one that is in charge of this whole thing. No? Mm. He knows how to raise people up, new generations, yeah. with new ideas. Some of these ideas you and I might not agree with because mm. that was not the one that we were used to. Yes. But guess what? God is still in the business of knowing how to catch his people and mm. bring them together. I need to say this before you know you ask another question. <laughs> I don't know how you were able to attract this many pastors. I'm looking at the names of some of these pastors. <laughs> many of them I know them very well. I've not even seen them for that many years. And you have them on this on this platform. I must clap for you that I don't know how you did it too. I'm telling you, you now know why I called you. I will call you again because I want to know. I'm seeing some names and I say, ah, these are my people now. I've not seen these people or spoken to them, even to see their name written somewhere in how many years. Now I'm seeing them for this thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sir. All on. right. Uh, I, I'm going to roll two questions in one because I want us to... Uh, Pastor Augusto Nabir says, how do you in best integrate new members who are pastors in their previous churches? So maybe you have these new people who come to church and they are pastors. You know, How, how do you deal with those uh, kind of people. And then Pastor Pedro is asking, how do you deal with the issue of salaries of associate pastors? How much is too small and uh, or too much? <laughs> um, let, me, let me say it from my own perspective and how we do some of these things in uh, Jesus House Baltimore. Um, and we didn't just start this. It's what we've been doing for many years. Mm. Um, when people relocate and come to Maryland, because we were still in our CCG, many will come. Some will come uh, with, you know, a letter of transfer and right. things, and you know, I, and I have no problem with any of those things. Mm. The only thing I say to them is that you must go through the workers' training again. Mm. Mm. Now, this is the challenge. I know you've done workers' training before. But let's look at it this way. If you are a tech engineer and you work for Intel mm. and now you got a new job and you're working for Microsoft, will you not attend Microsoft introductory classes? Mm. The issue of the 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 the, the workers training for me is not a Bible school. Mm. It's to introduce you to the way and manner that we do this work mm. here in this place. Mm. In this place, because Amos thirty three says, "Can two work together except they be in agreement?" Mm. In agreement, division is not the problem. It's the working together that is the issue. Mm. Do you understand? So, um. God has many children, and not one pastor is the same as another one. Mm. The same way, every father that has many children, you will say, you know your children are not the same. You know, even if you have two, three, mm. you know they are not the same. Mm. You know, so you deal with each one according to your revelation of who they are, and mm. you are able to get to them and all that. And yeah. it's the same thing. So we could be in the same organization, but the pastors are different. And the approach to things is different. You know, so what we have been doing since then is that once you come, it's not a problem. You go to the workers' training class. Mm. I've had a bishop attend our workers' training class. Mm. And when I saw him, I was on board. He had been a Christian before I became a Christian. We mm. went to college together. He had, uh, he, they were the ones ministering to us when we were in college and we didn't listen to them then. 
I'm telling you. Ah, when I walked into the class and I saw him, I said, ah, sir, what are you doing here? Ah, he said, no, he must be here. Hmm. I said, no, 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 it's not going to happen. Hmm. I said, this one, we, I will override. Overrule it. <laughs> Everybody was sitting there. And, the, and because he had told me, yes, we just relocated. We are in your church for now, but we will set up our own church. And he hmm. has a church in Nigeria. He's a, and he's a big man. Hmm. He said, I must stay in this class because I want to know what you are doing mm. that made this church to be what it is. And mm. I've spoken to a lot of people in this city mm. and they talk about you. Mm. The man stayed in the class. Mm. Today, of course, they've left many years ago. Today, they, they, are, they have their own church. There. We, we operate together on so many levels. I still mm. spoke to him like last week or something like that. Mm. So what I'm trying to it's just to introduce the church to you, mm. introduce the vision. Does this? Why do we do what we do, and how do we do mm. what we do? And that's mm. it. Do you mm. understand? Um, yeah. Some people's situation might be different that you might not be able to do that. Mm. Do you understand? And I don't know of too many. Mm. You know that's why I used our own example. Your own example, yes. That's yes. All. Yeah. There's issue of uh, you know maybe emoluments or remuneration for okay. associates. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the, 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 the issue of that is is very simple. Honestly, I believe a laborer is worthy of his wages. Not all associate pastors and stamp pastors will be remunerated. Do you understand? But if you have one that is working, if they are working, we have a pastor that is in our church. She's an executive pastor. She's full-time. She has to be remunerated. Mm. And that's the thing. Do you understand? So it's not a problem. You know, for me, if tomorrow we need to have three more pastors and they will be full-time and remunerated. We will remunerate them. Why not? Mm. Mm. You know, God does not order what he cannot pay for. Do you mm. understand? I believe yeah. that God will take care of the finances on that. Mm. Because this is, very, this is very close to my heart. Mm. I don't believe that we are serving God and people should not be taken care of. You know, when we started out, they told us, it's by faith, use faith. Honestly, I use faith to come into ministry. Don't let me use faith to buy food again. <laughs> Please, <laughs> let me use faith to buy food again. <laughs> At least don't let me, don't let my children run away from school. I mean, mm. from, from church. Mm. Just because they know at home, there is no food at home. And mm. yet I'm doing this work 24-7. Mm. That's the least the church can do. Mm. That's the least mm. the church can do. Mm. Okay, last it, it's it's uh this is supposed to be one hour, so we are six minutes to closing. And so I'm gonna ask this last question, you know. Um you've been over 30 min 30 years in ministry, or is he up to 40 now? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but in all the in all these decades in ministry, they, I'm sure you have vital lessons that you have learned. I'd like you to just share with us. Two vital lessons, even if they are very simple, just two vital lessons, you know, that we can that we can go away with today. <laughs> ah. mm. First one for me is that you you have to know that God has called you. Mm. You have to know that, and you have to to be sure and be sure. Mm. You know, because there will be times that due to things people will do, yeah, you might want to doubt your calling. Mm. There will be wow. times that things will be happening in mm. the ministry mm. that at times you might want to doubt your calling. Don't mm. doubt your calling. Mm. And, and that calling, mm. don't let it be based on your own insecurity mm. because you didn't call yourself. It's God that yeah. called you. Yeah. And the God that called you he knows everything about you. Mm. you understand? Yeah. For instance, you know, you talked about, oh, Pastor, you are like this, you talk like this. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Since the day I've been born, this is where I've been talking. <laughs> I had challenges when we started ministry and I will be preaching like this. It was then I realized that church people, they don't really like truth. <laughs> it took me a while to understand that church people, they don't like truth. So they want, mm. The people they like, is that the people that are lied to them, <laughs> And that's not, uh, that's not my, my, 
my, my, my you know, personality. Mm. So one day I came to church. I said, please, praise God. I said, let me say this now. If you want to leave this church, you can leave. You will not change me to who I'm not. I will mm. speak the truth at any time. If you don't like it, too mm. bad. I said, but I will not lie to you. Mm. Honestly, I thought nobody would show up next Sunday. Next mm. Sunday, some people came home. When they came, I said, thank God you came. So <laughs> now, let's now continue with this relationship. That was how God freed me. Mm. You understand? Mm. You understand? I, and I want you to know that for everyone that is serving God, God has your back. Mm. I'm telling you. Mm. He has your back. He mm. has your back. He has your back. Mm. He will always take care of you. Yeah. I'm a living testimony. God has been good to me. Mm. Has there been challenges? Yes, there have been. But in all the challenges, I cannot but say, thank you, Jesus. Mm. So wherever you might be today, I don't know. Everybody, we are on different levels. What I mean by that is that maybe you are just starting out. Mm. You know, and some have been doing it for 30 years. And there are some on this online that they have been here well, well, you know, ahead of me before now. Yeah. I just wanted to know that wherever you find yourself, God has your back. Mm. Oh, well, Pastor Allah, I mean, it's one hour has, has sped past, I mean, past, sped past and um, I mean, we could go on and on, but we need to, I mean, there are pastors oh, yeah. who are here. I spoke, I spoke too long, sorry. No, 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 you spoke too long. I'm just saying, you know, there's, there's so much to, there's so much to, to talk, to talk about. You know, um, especially with, with pastors. I mean, I always say that, I mean, I, I was an accidental pastor, so I was able <laughs> just just pastoring for those few years. I, Me too. I, <laughs> I know, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know. Accidental. I told you now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so anyway, but it, it's been enriching, and thank you for being so so down to earth and um, for just you know just sharing the truth. Um, I want to thank uh, you know all the pastors who have who have come here tonight. Uh, honestly, I uh, pastor, I didn't know that we would even have this uh, turnout because you know my my Zoom account, even if it's a pro I mean a professional one, is only hundred. It was this even I said because I had like between two hundred people registered, but you know how online events are people will register for free and and the meeting they will not turn up. So, but I kept sending reminders and all of that, and then it was this evening I just bought. The bigger room, so five, you know, just pay fifty dollars for that, and thank God, I mean, where we had over hundred people here. <laughs> but thank you so much. I think I think you should pray. Please pray for us. Uh, pray pray for everyone who is in ministry here tonight. Um, as you are led, sir, just pray for us as we close up. Oh, once again, Pastor Wale, I want to say thank you. You thank know, you. for this opportunity. Honestly, I don't take it for granted. Uh, and like I said, you know. Um, I'm seeing some names there that I've not seen in a long time. I hope they will repent and uh, they will <laughs> talk, you know, and all that. But honestly, 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 because yeah. the problem with pastors is that we are so busy that yes. we don't have time, you know. Yes. And I like the approach of this thing that it's not a heavy, heavy, heavy. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. We, we go through a lot of heavy, heavy every time. So, yes. so let's just relax ourselves. Thank yes. you once again. Yes. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to fellowship amongst co-laborers. Lord, I pray for every pastor, everyone on this platform, including myself, that the grace for us to end well, let it rest upon us, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We ask Jehovah God Almighty that your hand will continuously be upon us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Guide us, Almighty God, to do that which is right every day in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray, Jehovah God Almighty, there might be one or two people here who are going through one challenge or the other. Lord, send help us to them, O oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Let them know that you are still in charge of the affairs of men in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And for Pastor Wally that has, you know, put all this together, Father, I pray that you continue to enlarge his coast. Amen. Continue to enrich him, Almighty God, in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. In Amen. Jesus' name, we are afraid. Amen. Amen.